Welcome to another episode of Local Paper TV. And with us, we have a very special guest today. Cami Cordner Hunt is standing for the Senate. She's a uh, Victorian representative of the Fusion Party. Hello, Cami, and welcome. Uh, good morning, Ash. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Terrific. Now, Cami, tell us a little bit about yourself. Why are you standing for the Senate? I feel the Senate is, a, is the best place to um, deal with the policy issues that uh, aren't being met at the moment uh, for the changes we need if we're going to get out of our fossil fuel economy and into a more renew a renewable economy and bring down our emissions and actually create a livable future for future generations. Also, in terms of a local seat, I'm in the same electorate as Helen Haynes and I support her absolutely. So uh, I'm going into the Senate as an extra voice in that independent sphere, but as a member of Fusion Party. Cammy, uh, you see uh, a role as being part of the conversation. It's very important to uh, be part of the, uh, the conversations, especially in regards to uh, energy and the environment. Uh, what does the Fusion Party stand for? The Fusion Party stands for net zero by 2030 and then continuing beyond net zero. It's important to uh, re realise that net zero means not zero emissions, but actually net zero emissions, where we have enough emissions to offset the emissions we're already making. Uh, we need to go beyond net zero to negative emissions, and we can do that by increasing our drawdown through regenerative agriculture, and by increasing our renewables um, potential to 800%. If, we're, if we make only 100% renewables to supply our electricity, then we actually have no leeway in anything. But if we go to 800%, not only do we cover everything in electrifying our economy, but we also will be able to export some of that renewable power in form of electricity or green hydrogen, not sorry, batteries or green hydrogen and other ways which are yet to come. Cammy, you fear, I think, that uh, the Senate voting uh, is confusing for voters and they may not understand uh, how to best use their vote. Oh, look, I'm glad you asked that question, Ash, because um, the Senate vote is most often confounds people when they arrive at the polling booth. Uh, through all the campaign time, there's enormous amount of um, attention paid to the celebritisation of personalities who are standing. Everyone gets to know who their lower house candidates are, their House of Representative candidates. Uh, they go to candidate forums, they see the arguments in the paper about, you know, pro versus cons and all that sort of thing. Uh, but then when they get into the ballot in the polling booth, they're given a little green paper for that job to vote for their representative. And then they're handed a one metre long white paper for the Senate vote, and th this has got 28 columns of names on it, and people go, what, what, what the, I mean, I don't know anything about this. I wasn't prepared for this, you know, I'm not even going to bother. I, I mean, there's probably a lot of people who feel they won't bother, but it used to be one above the line, and that's the other thing that comes into Senate vote is the mystery and myth of secret preference deals. Yes, there used to be secret preference deals in the Senate vote because when people voted one above the line to make it easier for them, because the alternative to one above the line was one to 75 among all these unknown people below the line, uh, but the parties had to register their preferences with the AEC so that when they got a one, the AEC could then distribute the preferences for them. So that, and that was a very opaque system. We had no idea when we put one above the line for the party we were choosing, what would happen after that. So people still talk about those secret preference deals and not trusting people, not knowing what people stand for, but actually that no longer exists. So that's a myth. That's been fixed by the new six above the line. So when you're going to vote for the Senate, it's really important that voters are prepared with the six parties they want to support above the line. Because when you get in there, there's 28 choices above the line. Yes. So, and it can be quite hard to find the parties you want. So, for example, we're at Fusion is at co column S, which is sort of two thirds or three quarters of the way down the paper. So if you want to uh, support um, six parties, and I suggest that they are small parties and climate emergency parties to get a really good 
difference in Parliament, uh, something that's actually going to make change, then you need to actually have take a list in with you of who you want to find on that giant piece of paper and feel prepared for it. Kami, there's been a lot of talk in the media about the possibility of a hung parliament. How do you feel about that? Well, a hung parliament, uh, that actually, Ash, is another fear-mongering issue that the media and the major parties really ramp up. Uh, there is nothing to be feared from a hung parliament. Uh, we have had a hung parliament before, and the evidence from the from the Gillard hung parliament was how the parties really, really had to work together and get through policy that suited everyone. You have to remember that when one party's in power, they really only represent half of the Australians with a little bit more. And then when it transfers to the other major party, that's half the Australians with a little bit more. So if in a hung parliament, if both major parties representing half of Australia each are forced to actually negotiate, uh, they'll bring the best policies for everyone. So a hung parliament's a good thing, nothing to be feared. Cammy, you've had experience as an educator throughout your life. Uh, you've been a local government councillor. Uh, you've had a active life in terms of uh, environmental activism. Uh, what would you bring to the Senate? So I think one of the uh, critical things I learned over 30 years of environmental activism was uh, being, being encouraged to toe the line and work with power. So, so people in power, corporations who have the power, work with them. And what I've seen over 30 years is people getting absolutely exhausted and burnt out by, by constantly being told, yep, yep, we'll go there, yes, we'll go there, and then actually seeing nothing happen. So in fact, in the last 30 years, all of the environmental issues that we were trying to deal with 30 years ago have actually escalated. And corporate wealth has escalated because uh, wealth comes from actually comes from gouging nature. So in the Senate, I fusion, I will stand for really breaking that nexus between corporate power and the destruction of the environment by being a really strong voice standing up for people who actually don't want this anymore. None of us want this anymore. And the future generations certainly don't want this anymore. Cammy, um, you are a candidate for the Senate in, uh, in Victoria um, in the coming federal election. Now, one of the uh, aims I understand is that you want to have a focus on anti-corruption uh, through the government. Could you tell us a bit about that, please? Uh, thank you, Ash, for that question, because um, the economic paradigm that the Western world is in at the moment, uh, our capitalism is now in what is known as um, a neoliberal economy. Um, and the emphasis of, the, of neoliberalism is freedom of the individual. So it was believed um, in the 1980s, 1990s, that the more freedom you gave to individuals to be entrepreneurial, uh, the more success they would have, and that would bring everyone along with them. Um, but what what was hap what happens there is that the way to financial success basically is by is through environmental um, exploitation. So there's unlimited success and wealth you can make from unlimited exploitation of the environment. So you have this nexus between um, wealth growth and wealth and environmental destruction. So, and what happens if you just give self-interest, so self-interest is considered the best thing for uh, everyone's interest. But if you give self-interest a free reign, as we have been doing, what you get is self-interest constantly devising ways to make sure they're constantly being served and that, can't, that ends up leading into corrupt practices. So all of this has been leading to corruption happening under our nose. And we've had faith that it wouldn't happen, but uh, that you know, our government wouldn't do this to us, our corporations wouldn't do this to us, but gradually we're coming to see more and more that self-interest ends up going to a, a form of corruption. And that's one thing we have to stop. We have to legislate against corruption. There's no laws in government parliament at the moment to stop it. We're speaking with Cammy Cordner Hunt who is a candidate for the Senate in Victoria for the federal election that's occurring on May 21. Cami, pre-poll voting 
uh, is just about underway um, and there'll be many votes cast prior to Saturday, May 21. Uh, what's your advice to voters? Ah, well, look, uh, I think that's quite a good thing. I think that the uh, media is ramping up its um, frenzied uh, uh, attacks on everything which, pe which upset people and make people turn off. So maybe the sooner you vote, the better. Uh, but, and also the thing, there's less, uh, there's less waiting in queues. Um, I can recommend you go to pre-poll. You can do it in your own time. And you can actually be prepared before you go in. Um, and you'll have time when you're in there. You could probably do a bit of Googling on your phone if there's something you want to look up. Um, and I can recommend that. I've also noticed that people have already ordered their um, postal votes are really happy to have their ballot papers at home and really sit down and study them. And I think that's a great thing for democracy. I think pre-polling is a great thing for democracy. Um, and as long as you put one fusion at, at, in the S column on the Senate paper, then you'll be helping uh, make Australia a better place. And, and in fact, make Australia a better um, international representative on the global stage in terms of going forward into a future for all, for all our future generations. Tammy, there are many candidates who base their entire campaigns on fear. Uh, you seem to have a solutions-based approach. Um, could you talk a little bit about um, how, how you'd like your campaign to proceed in the remaining days of this election campaign? Yes, well, that's a, that's a good point, Ash, because uh, there is a lot of gloom and doom around the climate emergency and we really need to give people hope and to understand what is positive and hopeful. And that is all the solutions that we have to the fossil fuel economy, the solutions we have to transition to renewables. Uh, they're all up and ready to go. Saul Griffith, a great Australian, he has written uh, The Big Switch, which is has all the solutions. He was working in America for 20 years. In fact, he was... Um, an emissions reduction advisor to the White House. He's back in Australia and he really, really wants to help Australia move forward to the next stage. And there's also Beyond Zero Emissions, which is a federal government initiative, um, or no, sorry, it's a non-government organisation that um, has all the answers we need to get to zero emissions and beyond. The te technology is there. It's waiting to be implemented. It's waiting for um, political will to remove the obstacles to it and to remove the subsidies that our, our taxpayers are giving to the fossil fuels. It's actually in the order of billions of dollars a year that we actually underwrite fossil fuel extraction. And we're doing that at the expense of allowing a renewable alternative to come through. So um, that's what I'll be standing for and they're the solutions. And we want people to believe in those solutions, vote for us and also, um, to break down the fear about their vote, break down the fear of impotence about their vote, because actually every single person has a powerful vote and I'm hoping that they will become aware of it and use it. We've been speaking with Cammy Cordner Hunt, a candidate for the Senate uh, in Victoria, and Cammy is associated with the Fusion Party. Thank you very much for your time today, Cammy. Oh, thank you so much, Ash, for giving me this opportunity to air Fusion's policies and what I plan to do for the people of Australia if, if, if I get there. <laughs> Many thanks, Cammy.